lads, welcome back to the channel. What's happening? How are you all doing? It is Saturday where I'm at at the moment and uh, we are about to check out the latest Metalcore poll winner. Now this poll was absolutely stacked. I had 20 options I think and they were all like really popular requests between Deathcore and Metalcore. So excuse me, it's actually the core poll that we are now running. So that had like I think just under 250 votes. And when the end began by Silent Planet was the album to come out on top. So this has trumped a lot of big names, lads, a lot of big deathcore bands, a lot of big metalcore bands. So I'm expecting big, big things from this album. So guys, without any further ado, we're going to jump in. But before we do, actually, I want to say something. The Silent Planet album, Irreticent, is something that I have gone back to certain singles. I haven't massively listened to the album a lot of times after reacting to it it's just not something i've kind of gone back to i think i kind of listened to it at a time where i was discovering a lot of new metalcore talent and silent planet has kind of fallen to the back of the list or not exactly the back but it hasn't been priority i ended up on garrett russell who is the lead singer of silent planet's instagram recently and i happened to see the story of his dog who he i believe rescued i'm not entirely sure that the entire backstory but I followed the story back to when he got the dog. Uh, it was only like a few weeks old, only a little puppy. And if you guys are aware of that story, you'll know how unbelievably sad that story is, man. I was sobbing over the Instagram posts. Like, and this was barely even knowing anything about him or even the story. I just happened to see like the last Instagram post that he did with the dog and then followed it back to, you know, the beginning and then like kind of re-ran through his story via his instagram posts and oh my god like that was so emotional and then i realized that the outro track in Irreticent is partly written about his dog so i mean that like added so much more value to that album and i went back and listened to it and well i listened to like the outro i haven't done a full listen back again but uh we'll see when we get back around to listening to them again get back into the swing of things of silent planet because I do remember being very, very impressed with the album. I don't know what it is. I just kind of had a lot of albums, like I said, that I've been kind of jamming out to. So uh, Silent Planet hasn't been someone I've massively, you know, gone back to and I'm really appreciated. So I just thought I'd include that. Like I was aware of the backstory and it just kind of like gives you that emotional connection. Obviously Silent Planet also recently had a like a, a car crash or a van crash where their, uh, their touring van like flipped over and luckily everyone was safe. There was no one like harmed other than I'm, a few, I'm assuming a few like you know fucking traumatic stories and, and and minor injuries from what i understand but uh their post that they did went like very viral within the metal community and kind of beyond the metal community as well and they received a lot of donations so they're back up and running so uh you know that's great news obviously we can uh look forward to more silent planet music in the uh the future but um yeah look we won't talk much more lads like i said this album was massively requested based on the fact that it, it trumped a lot of big albums so uh i'm looking forward to it it is 48 minutes long. When the end began by Silent Planet, lads, please do leave a like on this video. It'd be much appreciated. Make sure you're sub to the channel, patreon.com forward slash Drew Fortune. And let's get into it.
big intro. And I think The Night God Slept is reference to one of their other albums, I'm pretty sure. I seen that when I was scrolling there a minute ago. I'm guessing that's the theme of the album, so I'm guessing we're just going to go deeper. Garrett's um, writing is always so intricate and self-reflecting and I suppose thought-provoking when it comes to the general state of the world. Yeah, I'm not for that golden cross Held by the priest 
What riff is this very like? Is it a current riff or is it Silent Planet? Bound it a little, 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 down it. I feel like it would make sense that it's a Silent Planet riff from Ereticin, but I can't think of the track. But I also feel like it's it's actually a current riff because I'm very, very familiar with it. But it's so, it feels very distinct. Like, it, I don't think it could be Currents because Silent Planet have such a unique sound, even within a sound that does have a lot of similarities. It's getting so cold. I can feel the cold air on my back coming through my door. Still here so clearly. Is it? So annoying. It's almost an identical riff, lads. Someone has to know what I'm talking about. It's got to be Silent Planet because it's too similar. This sounds great for an album that came out in 2014. man it's pissing me off so much you guys don't even you know when you just have that riff like so clearly in your head it's actually more annoying when it's so it's the closer it gets the more annoying it is although i'm like right on the edge figuring out what it is yeah, like although i'm almost there like i'm literally like i can hear the entire riff in my head but it's like i'd nearly rather have absolutely no clue because i'm that close and it's pissing me off let me get a jump around because I'm actually gonna die of frostbite here. Oh, lads, you don't understand. Actually, you absolutely do understand. You're probably all from like colder countries in Ireland that I'm just being an absolute little bitch right now. But Fail! 
just want a quick scan there to see if there was any more vocalists other than Garrett Russell on this. Well, I believe there wasn't. But he actually sounds as good on this album as he did on Eredison. So he's been fucking top of his game for years, man. And their production sounds almost identical as well. It's very rare that a band... Uh, it doesn't even say... Like, I don't want to say it doesn't progress because they don't really need to progress when it sounds this good back then, you know? But I'm loving this album so far, man. Absolutely incredible stuff. These guys don't really make bad songs, do they? Like, there hasn't been one bad song on this. Yeah, Garrett's use of words that I've never heard of before is actually very impressive and it like almost inspires you to actually go and Google these things. I would say pick up a dictionary, but who actually picks up dictionaries these days? But if I had a dictionary, I'd be like literally sitting here with one and looking through them all. But like even in the last few lyrics, so pyroglyphic, okay, pyroglyphic looks a lot like more complicated. Pyroglyphic, 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 is that something to do with... Egypt or that's hieroglyphics sorry you see already he's got me point being is that he's using very like uh I won't say unused words but it's it's not surface level lyrics and you have to actually dig into it a little bit and even when like I refer back to his Instagram like all the tributes and stuff that he was you know doing for his dog that had uh tragically died it was uh very poetic the way in which he wrote everything so he's obviously got a very a very strong pen so that's something I've already know, always noticed, and he, his use of just uncommon English words is uh, is noteworthy as well. It just kind of adds to the experience, because you're like, what does that mean? I'm going to go look this up, and it just it gives it more depth, you know? So, fair play to Gareth for being so such a good writer. Fucking got me. There it is.
man, that gave me so much chills. Oh my god. They haven't had a second of bad music. And funnily enough, when I was going back listening for that riff, when I listened back through Reticence off camera, like just really quickly scanning through, I was just like hearing the songs again. I was like, oh my god, man, these guys literally haven't made a bad song. At this, like first listen, I gave the album a very high rating, but like, like I said, I just haven't really gone back to it much. But after this, I feel like it's going to hit even harder and this album is going to like keep spiraling as well. Like already, I did The Devil Wears Prada yesterday, the uh, Color Decay album, and I liked it. I knew I liked it. It felt very unique. But even like second listen, like when I was editing it, I'm like, oh my God, like, why didn't I feel exactly like this when I was listening to it first time? It's just, it's very hard to, to know first listen, you know, but some albums just do it. And this album is one of them. Like straight off the bat, you're like, all right, yeah, this is, this is a classic album. And you know, it reflects that with the votes that it got. Like, like I said, it was 250 odd votes. And this one, one of a lot of big bands and a lot of big albums. And also, for anyone who's interested, we've got Time the Valuator. Or Time the Valuator. With their album, How Fleeting, How Fragile. That's going to be coming up next. So, uh, get involved for that. Early access on Patreon. But, uh, yeah, man, this is an incredible album so far. They literally haven't made a bad song in the two albums I've listened to. Let's see if they can make a bad song. My money's on no. is beautiful. They're in their bag right now where they've delivered so frequently that I'm just like, anything they do, I'm like, I'm just over, over loving. Like I'm fanboying hard right now. Like they could literally just do anything. They could just start farting into the mic right now and I'd just be like, ah. Oh! Oh, I like this delivery from Gareth here. This is different.
Yes! I don't know what overcame there. That was beautiful. Something just inspired me to just fucking do that. I don't know. I went to be hardcore chemo on that and I just wanted to punch something. Maybe I should put like a, a dummy behind me so I can just start fucking loafing it around. That was unbelievable! They don't make bad music. They don't. I haven't given these guys enough credit. Fantastic musicians. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. I've already, like, I've already made my mind. My, 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 I'm stuttering again. Fucking hell. I've been on a stutter spree recently. See what I mean? Like, what the fuck do they mean? Well, I know what headness means, but sol solipsist? Solipsist? Like, the amount of words that he just fit in there that I don't understand. But I appreciate the amount of effort that he goes into writing his lyrics, you know? I may not understand them, but that's not always a bad thing.
wild bass appears. Honestly, I wasn't feeling that track that much until he said I oh, hit the bottom and it hit me back and then that changed my whole opinion of the breakdown. That was a sick line. I hit the bottom then it hit me back. You bury me! Valleys and breaks in grief The 
man. I'm just trying to uh, look into the lyrics here because I don't know if it's directly referring to Garth Russell's own experience. But obviously the track being called Firstborn and then the lyrics are suggesting that the, you know, he had to bury the child. Um, So I'm trying to figure out if it's him speaking about his own experience or, you know, I'm looking for on Google here. But either way, regardless of whether, you know, whether or not it was Garrett's own child or if he's directly referring to, you know, someone he knows or anything, this line references a grief observed by C.S. Lewis, which are a collection of reflections and journals he wrote as a way to cope with death of his wife. Any of the questions the nature of grief? I'm trying to see if there's any like direct reference to, you know, whether or not it is his child or not. This song being about the death of a young infant or possibly a stillborn, Thomas asks this question as a way to ret Why is it saying Thomas? It was Will Putney. This album was, or this song at least, it says, let me see, produced by Will Putney. Will Putney, Fit for an Autopsy. I haven't done any Fit for an Autopsy. I'm pretty sure they're one of the bands in the core polls as well at the moment. But did he work on another popular album that I've done before? North Lane's Node and Singularity, Straight from the Path, The Amity Affliction, uh, Die Art is Murder, North Lane. Okay, so he's obviously worked on a lot of projects, so I've, I'm sure I've seen his name somewhere else before. But um, yeah, lads, goes out saying that track was littered with emotion. This feels like the emotional track from the album. Um... Musically, it didn't like, obviously the lyrical content gave me chills, but the actual song itself wasn't my favorite from them. The last two tracks haven't like grabbed me as much as the rest of the album, but like I still stand by the fact that these guys don't make bad tracks. Like I think these are more so growers on the album, but like right now, I think they're probably the two weakest from what I've heard. Now again, I know anyone who has like a very strong emotional connection to this song might disagree, but just from an overall music experience, um, you know, lyrics aside, I would say that these, the last two tracks have been... The weakest for me anyway, I'm sure I might come back to them and, and think otherwise. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if there's any backstory to that in terms of, you know, Garrett's story. But uh, yeah, really, really, um, really deep lyrics in that one. Definitely the emotional track. Yourself. What a world we know before we fear. 
Garth's got to be one of the best um, lyricists in metal, full stop. Not even just like metal core, just across the board from what I've seen. Um, again, not, I like the, uh, some of the riffs in that, but, um, overall, I think the last three tracks have been a little bit, not off, but I just didn't enjoy them as much as I did for the, uh, the intro tracks of the album, or the, the tracks that, uh, came before all of that, but, um, still a fucking incredible album. And I believe we have three tracks left, but, um, yeah, just last three haven't like clicked with me as much as the other ones did on first listen. I've also just realized that I can just mute my mic because a lot of the time I'm like trying to be real quiet because I've got the audio ducking on so whenever I make like the smallest noise like move my chair it's gonna like lower the music down but like all this time I could have literally just been doing this see right there I was talking and you guys just couldn't hear me so anytime I need to move I can just go No noise. Beautiful. I just wonder how long it's going to be until I uh, forget that I've muted myself and then I'm just like doing a whole talking piece. But I can see the waveform, so I should be able to copy myself, but I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll find some stage where I fuck it. No 
I feel like that one's gonna grow on me but before we get into the final track on the album i'm gonna go to the toilet because as you can see i've been downing this bottle of water and it is starting to catch up with me so give me two seconds before we go in depths three has this been is this actually the third depths or let me check I knew one truth, and that truth was to see Cold and knowing it saw the coward in me And as the stain of the epoch slides my tongue I choked heavy on the past, too numb to speak back We're each abandoned by the hands of time That set us down in cell circles across a straight line Since Yeah, this is actually the third track flat, Just a silent satellite and the sigh of flesh come down and rest around our head on my breast Listen to the terror tear of my chest Our mass antennas are shattered Feel free to pull me back to the vast unforgiving mass Should we call this art my falling apart The tangents of an imbalanced heart As matter multiplied I divide But I digress The deprivation is taking effect Said if I stood it against my darkness, not all of me would die. But all I see on the surface is a shadow. And it occurs to me, this could mean suicide. When you went quiet, I turned to silence. Seven sisters drowned me back across the mar. Cause you still love me in my leaving. But you remember me by the moments we forgot. And as a wave slapped at my wrath. really really strong album insanely strong album that is up there with one of the best albums i've heard in a while i think the last four tracks 
have put a little bit of a damper on it for me because I just didn't really click with it as much as I did for all of the tracks before that. Like every single track before that was like a hit instantly. Not saying that the bad tracks, I mean, they're all produced unbelievably well. Again, Garrett Russell's uh, lyrical ability is something to behold. I haven't seen anyone in the metalcore genre or even metal write as intricately as he does. So that is something that's very impressive. It's nothing surface level. All of the topics are very deep, very meaningful. I'm sure the album has a somewhat of a theme that it follows, but obviously I've only kind of picked up on certain tracks. Um, I'd be interested to know about the track about, I think it's called Firstborn, whether or not that is directly relating to his own experiences or if he's speaking about someone he knows, if anyone can fill me in. I didn't really see anything online from the quick scan I did while I was watching or listening to the song. Um, but other than that, man, I mean, the production as well for an album that was released in 2014, you could honestly play these back to back. I think maybe the, the main difference I noticed with uh, Irredescent or iridescent, I don't know how people pronounce that. I know there's a few different ways, or at least two different ways. Yeah, I'll go with iridescent for now. That album being 2021, I think that has a lot more of the alien techie sounds that like loads do, for example. I think that was one of the comparisons I made, because I'd listened to I Let It In and It Took Everything by Loath, like not too long before I listened to Iridescent by Silent Planet. And I was instantly making that comparison where it's a very modern sound with the... Uh, how would you even describe that like really crisp like transitional alien noises that Loathe and Silent Planet did but, but I mean it's very prominent on Irredescent but on this album although the production was fantastic it's like you can hear it almost the production sounded very very similar like very little difference in the overall sound and the, you know the overall engineering of the music but the actual elements of the production were the most noticeably different. There was still a lot of the cool tappy guitar riffs. I think they did it a lot more in Irredescent as well. This overall was just fantastic. I don't really know much what else to say, lads. I mean, I do... I am a little bit disappointed that I think it could have reached, like, that really upper echelon album if the last four album, if the last four tracks, like, really stood out with me. Like, it had me Mike Tyson in the camera there, like, in the middle of the album. Like, I was literally ready to start swinging hands. If someone came in that door, if my man came in that door, it was it was game on. Like, you know, I was ready to swing. Um, So, I mean, it had that effect on me, but it also gave me chills with certain songs. So, had a very nice contrast. But I think the last four tracks not sitting with me um, as much as they maybe could do down the line. I think that puts a damper on it for now. I would say it's an A, it's, a, it's, a, it's an A plus album. I don't think it goes to that S tier album because it, it didn't like finish as strong as I would have liked it. Um, again, I'm like new enough to Silent Planet as well. I haven't heard the rest of the discography. I know this track was called Depths 3, which was like the outro track. So I'm sure that would have had a lot more of a lasting effect on me if I had heard Death or Depths 1 and Depths 2. So, you know, I... I it's just my rating for now is going to be an A+. Plus, which is still an um, like you're, You can't really complain with an A+. Plus. That's like the normal, you know, best rating you can get. But because people just added S tier. I don't even know what S tier means. But S tier is just the best, apparently, according to all the uh, the internet kids. Um, but yeah, so it's it's not that upper echelon for me. Or, no, I think it is upper echelon. But I just don't think it makes it into that S tier level just yet. It might creep in over a few more listens. But yeah. Uh, like I said, I need to go back to Reticent as well and spin that one more time because even when I was going through the track list there and listening, just trying to find that riff that I was trying to think of again, let me know. But when I was spinning that, uh, you know, I was just listening to all the tracks and they were like really like hitting me a lot harder because I knew some of the elements of it and I was like, I've heard that before. You know, when you just go back to something, it just sounds great. So guys, that is going to be me for the video. If you did enjoy it, please do leave a like. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite Silent Planet album Al Al story silent planet album is because uh, i don't know if they have more very very high level albums because i believe there's a few albums or at least one album between 2014 and 2021 so if you guys want to see me do that let me know in the comments guys make sure you sub to the channel patreon.com forward slash true fortune in the description if you want to support the channel directly thank you so much for watching i'm sony i look after yourselves see you in the next one cheers yeah.